I got glasses. told that I should wear glasses the other day. You would look good in glasses, I think. Do you want to try one? Have a little peek. Let's see. Let's see how blind you are. Yeah, I'm very blind. Okay, yeah. So close one at a time. The eye, fine. Bad. Yeah. yeah. How <laughs> yeah. bizarre. So, so are you my, like blind in one I'm eye? I'm legally then... blind in my left eye, I'm pretty sure. Really? I reckon I, I can't see you if I do this. <laughs> so I think that's pretty blind. I also can't see the camera. Okay. I know it's somewhere over there. But the camera's just see. blurry for me now. Yeah, that's how I see. <laughs> but yeah, I got told I should wear glasses. Well, you look um, very nice. Hang thank on. you. Comment Thanks. below if you think Zach looks nice in his <laughs> glasses. Just boost my ego. And that is, of course, on YouTube. If mm. you're not on YouTube, you can't see him. Yeah. Again, apologies. go on the YouTube channel, people on Spotify. Go on the YouTube. Come on. Yeah. Actually, go on everything. I don't care. Do, do, watch it twice. Listen to it four times. <laughs> One on each channel. One on each, just like twice on YouTube, twice on podcast. Whether that's Spotify or Apple. Actually, do it six times. Okay. Twice on YouTube, twice on Apple, twice on Spotify. Can I make a confession, Jack? Okay. Episode two. I haven't even listened to it yet. <laughs> <laughs> I listened to the first like 20 minutes and then got okay. distracted and then I didn't come back. That's okay. I mean, so I can't expect anyone else to listen to it. Really. Well, I listen to it an excessive amount. Yeah, it's like uh, edits all. Editing it. So Again, I am just a monkey that comes uh, and, and just shouts. Could let you off the hook with that. I Thanks, think buddy. I listened to it for enough both for of both us. of us. That's what yeah. I assumed as well. Yeah. Is your leg okay there? Yeah, right. I'm I'm perfectly comfortable. That's because cool. we're in a different set again. We're in a different place. Again. Yeah. again. Third time. Every episode will be in a brand new <laughs> set, by the way. We might end up that way, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, well, it'll happen. We've got a very nice set here. It's great. We've got chess. We, we can't play chess, but we just thought we'd have it. I'm not very good at chess. Yeah, me neither. I, again, I don't know what any pieces do. I just... Make nice patterns. Just move it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> we have a candle, look. We've got a candle. Very romantic. Nice. Yeah, romantic vibe. Two glasses. Yep. One for water, one for what will, what will be whiskey. Yep. It's almost, it's quite a romantic scene. It Zach. is. Why is it so romantic? Um, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> need we have an excuse? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't think we need an excuse, but. Um, we could think of one. We could think of one. <laughs> No, but um, we, we had a suggestion. We did, from, uh, it was, I think it was Instagram, someone, I, don't, I can't remember, someone suggested something. Uh, a listener suggestion uh, to talk about relationships. Yes. Um, I, think, I think they were primarily meaning like romantic relationships, um, but I feel like we can take it just as all relationships. We can so do, yeah. Family, friends. Yes. Um, I think that could be quite I think you're right, I think that'd be quite nice. It might be in some parts quite serious. Yes. Some parts are very funny. I have a lot of embarrassing stories. That's good. About relationships, because I'm an idiot, as we all know. Great, perfect. Um, <laughs> in some parts, it would be quite touching and emotional. Mm. But we'll try to keep it, you know, uh, nice and light. It is a, a nice entertainment podcast. This and we're not experts thing. on this as well. No. We're just pretending. Exactly. Well, pretend wisdom um, <laughs> does what it says on the tin. So don't take any advice from us at all. <laughs> uh, and if you do, that's on you. Yeah, exactly. If that's, you a, do... that's a good quote. If you do... That's on you. It rhymes. <laughs> Beautiful. Uh, yeah, if you do take our advice, um, it, some of it might be great. Well, yeah, yeah. Learn from our many mistakes. Mm. That's good advice. Learning from mistakes is is good advice. Mm -hmm. And um, if you do learn something, tell us what it is. Oh, yeah. Oh, Dude, if we plan. end up with listeners getting married because of something that they learned on this podcast... <laughs> we want an invite to that wedding. Exactly. We better be on the, like... The groom's party. We'll do a live uh, podcast. We'll do a, li oh, a live recording. At the wedding. At the wedding. <laughs> fully suited up. Oh, 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 she said I do. Oh, thank <laughs> you. Oh, he said it too. Oh, great. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Yeah. No one contested. That's okay. Yeah. Well, That's we, we could. That could be we a could, list of suggestion. Up. Contest a wedding. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we could stand up in the middle of the wedding and just go, yeah, I have an issue with this. They took our advice and we're, we're idiots. So <laughs> this is not going to work, guys. This is never going to work out. Well, uh, this this will be a podcast for those that are single, uh, yeah. those that are in relationships, mm -hmm. those that have been married for sixty years. <laughs> and, uh, and eight, they're eighty years old. They can't work phones. Come on, <laughs> <laughs> they're not listening to this. Um, but yeah, I guess uh, let's dive into relationships. Hang on, you're missing a very important step first. Am I? Whiskey. 
Come on, bro. That's, that's, I'm sorry. Come on. Yeah, no, you're right. We start with whiskey every time. If you're new to this podcast, <laughs> how did you find it? Uh, we always start with a glass of whiskey because it's a nice thing to do. Get us all liquored up to talk about stuff, um, which is more fun. Today, what have we got, that, Zach? Oh, what have that we got? Is beautiful. Oh, hang on. I need to do it. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, hang on. You tell yeah, us what we, we need got. The, we need the whiskey ASMR. Oh, I'll again. do the. There we go. Beautiful. Different mics this week as well. Yes, different mics. We're trying out a new thing. You might notice you can see our chins. Exactly, you can see more of our face, and we're a bit more free to move around. Don't have mics in our face. <laughs> we're more free to move around in our most enclosed set. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> May I pour this whiskey? <coughs> That'd be lovely. Thank Would you, you like to tell the ladies and gentlemen the name of this whiskey? Um, I feel like I'm going to mispronounce it. That's, and that's after, why I'm asking you to do it. <laughs> after your brother got on me for the pronunciation oh, of the did. other whiskey. <laughs> that's right, he did. <laughs> um, it's okay. Um, I think it's Ben Reich. Ben Reich. Reich. Okay, yeah, Ben Reich. Reich. Cool, so that's pretty good. Yeah, so th- this is our new segment. Yeah. Um, I give you a word to try and spell. <laughs> yeah. You give me a word to try and pronounce. It works perfectly. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, that's fair. Beautiful. So, Ben Reich. Um, well done. Good ugh at the end. Ugh. Ben yeah, Reich. it's the South African <laughs> in me. Um, this is a nice little bottle. There's an, a lovely little shop right next to my apartment, where we are right now, um, called the Whiskey Shop. I went in there and said... I had a wee chat with a lady and she recommended me the Ben Rag. It's called the Smoky 12. Nice. 12 year old single malt, mm-hmm. um, but it is, as it says in the front tin, a triple cask. Oh, wow. So there's three types of casks, which I'm not reading from the back here. It is bourbon, sherry, and Marsala wine. Wow. But I didn't read that from the no, box. That was off the top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah at the top of the box, yeah. Um, <laughs> so it's three different casks all mixed together to make a lovely. Space side whiskey mm-hmm. region has got. Oh, if you go back to episode one, you'll learn all about this. Yeah, it makes exactly. it smoky because of the peat they use mm. to dry out the wheat Beautiful. or the barley, and that goes into the whiskey and makes it all smoky, like oh. very dark, darker than our, our usual. Beautiful. It looks delightful. It smells does. great. Go back to the candle here. Not too close. <laughs> Don't want to warm it up. It's quite a lot of whiskey. I've poured myself. Shall we? Hang on. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, that was a good one. I think that was. It smells like, and um, again, I'm not reading this, burnt orange. Oh, can you imagine? And smoky vanilla. Oh, it's so good. Is it good? Yeah, hang on. Oh, yeah. I would also like to point out at this point <clears throat> that half the bottle is already gone. <laughs> that was not us. No. <laughs> no, that was, I've had this for like um, three or four weeks now. Oh, mm. A month, about a month. Mm. I think you were here when I opened it. I, I was the first drink of the bottle. You were? Yeah. Well, yeah, Zach was the first drink of the bottle. Um, so, so we've already had this before. It's in, it's in my collection. <clears throat> but it is a beautiful whiskey, and it so is. any excuse to drink it again, mm. we will. It's drink. like a smoky vanilla almost. That's why yeah. I pronounce that. It's really it's good. Really, that is really good, isn't it? The smoky mm. aftertaste. It, it, at points, it does kind of taste like you've inhaled smoke from a fire, but that's kind <laughs> of the point. And it's actually really Yum. good. Yum. <laughs> it's actually really good. Don't knock it until you've tried it. It's <laughs> not, don't, not, don't, don't breathe smoke from a fire straight into your lungs. That's not good. No, don't do that. But the whiskey, yeah, we recommend The whiskey, that. if you want the taste. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, actually, it's very good. I might very give good myself whiskey. a little angel drop like here. Look, you can give yourself a little angel drop with a little... Don't let it drip in. Come on. Come on. Come on. It's not doing it. Almost there. Almost there. There you go, it dripped in. There and then that'll... Nice. Whole new oh, waft of flavours because it breaks the surface tension of the mm. oil. Mm. Yum. If you want more information, again, go back to episode one. We talked all about yeah. this. Yeah, I can't believe you're still here. Pause this, <laughs> go back to episode one, uh, and then you can come back. Yeah. We'll, we'll give you a second. Yeah. Just um... Welcome back. <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, this is good whiskey. Thank you. On to relationships. Mm. Zach, are you currently in a relationship? I am not. Are oh, you not? I you, am... Is it complicated? Is it single? Is it you're hiding something from me? <laughs> well, this is the big confession. I've been married for the last twelve years <laughs> <laughs> to you. Oh my god, <laughs> <laughs> we've been married. It's Why like do a... you think our chemistry is so good? <laughs> <laughs> it's like Ross and Rachel all over again. Oh yeah, there you go. So if you don't get that friends joke, you're too young. Y- yeah. Yeah, yeah. Or you've never watched it. Oh, that's a good point. <laughs> you. Kn- You've never watched Friends Mm-mm. before? Ever? Ah, oh, well, Ross and I, Rachel get married. I don't think I've ever watched a full episode. Wow. I've seen clips. But, I mean, they're not very long. They are basically clips. 
They're yeah. like 10 minutes long, yeah. 15 minutes long. They're not very long. Well, that's the only confession you'll get out of me. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I, I am I'm single. Well done. Fully single. Um, yeah. Congrats. Really that's, like, that's, that's good. That's good. Yeah. How, how, about you? how about you? I'm also single. Single? So, yeah, it's a pretty basic pocket. That's it over. There you go. Uh, so we are best qualified to talk about yeah, relationships, yeah. being both single. <laughs> I was, as we were talking about that, I was like, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Both single. <coughs> yeah, I haven't been in a relationship for a while. How long? When, when was your last relationship you were in? Okay, when I say a while, <laughs> probably like, what's it got to be? Four, five months now? That's not bad. That's, so that's enough okay. to be single proper. I think that that's the longest I've been single since I was... You player, are you serious? Yeah. And how old are you, 22? 23. Five years? That's the longest you've been single? You player, what the hell? I think so. I didn't know this. Well, so I was talking to Joel, our mutual friend, yes, and um, I realised that I have a bit of a pattern where a relationship will start in like September or October. <laughs> you have seasons. And then, you? this is the weird, <laughs> this is the weird thing. And then it will usually end by like latest August. That's recently. Yeah. So latest it would be August, but usually around May, the relationship will then end. And then by September, October, I'm then dating again. And it's been this cycle for the last three years that this exact process has wow. happened. And it's bizarre. And so uh, I've made a pact with myself yes. that uh, it's not going to happen. And I've, I've beaten the... The process, the whole cycle. <laughs> it's, I'm it's out like a drug, cycle you're now. like a drug addict. Yeah. Like, I'm going to go cold turkey now. <laughs> cold, cold turkey. No more cycles. No more cycles. Um, it's, that's, that's, that's like an animal cycle, that. It's almost like getting ready for spring, finding a mate. Really that's, weird. That is really weird. Really weird. It wasn't on purpose, was it? No. <laughs> It'd be weird the thing was, was. Every, every relationship that I've gotten into, I wasn't actively looking for a relationship. This is the weird thing. And what, then they always come along. bumped into you or what? Yeah. Just on the street. <laughs> every, oh, every time I just bumped into something. And then you check your watch and go, mm, kind of running out of time. You'll do. That's fine. <laughs> mm, it's, almost, it's almost December. I mean, I oh my long. gosh. <laughs> that's not what you do. <laughs> no, thankfully not. <laughs> um, but no, I, I was never actually like actively looking. Fair. Um, just happened. You're just such a player. They come to you, man. Have you got, have you got do you like um, going on dates? I quite like a date. I love I mean, we, we set this up to be a bit of a date right now. A, a, really, a really bad date. Chess, a candle and some whiskey. <laughs> I mean, that would be great for us, but for most humans I know, that's a bit weird. <laughs> I feel like this is a great date idea. Like, yeah, for us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But for most human beings. Probably not. Hey, do you want to come round to mine for some whiskey and chess? <laughs> Isn't a first date. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love dating. I like dates too. It's so much fun, dude. It is, yeah. It's something nice about a date, especially a first date, I find, mm. um, where it's just a bit, you're kind of a bit nervous, but really excited, um, and you're kind of like on, on your toes a bit, mm. and trying to make them feel special, and like you go and just do special things. It's just nice. I like that. The it really niceness is. niceness of it, and being romantic. It's a very nice thing, I find. I think it's, it's great fun as well, and that's why I'm of the... The mindset that you should never stop dating. Oh. That even if you're in a relationship and you've been married for the last twenty years, you should always date each other. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was no, so no. confused. By I'm that. not <laughs> condoning like polygamous <laughs> relationships or anything like that. Um, but I'm saying you should always date your partner. Yes. You should always make time to go have fun, do something, and mm -hmm. make make them feel special because after being in a relationship for months or years decades however long it is it can potentially lose its kind of shine when you yeah. when you get out of that honeymoon phase mm -hmm. it can potentially lose that shine um but then always making sure that you're making time for each other having some fun yeah just you know dating your significant other that does forever. sound quite nice yeah although I, I was concerned at the beginning you were like all right when you're in a relationship hey go just wild carry on dating yeah dating's fun <laughs> don't be tied down player come on <laughs> Yeah, no, no. I feel weird saying player. <laughs> I'm not. I'm, I'm too middle class for to say that. Yeah. Player. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. Don't, don't do that. That don't is don't. our pretend wisdom for today. Don't. don't don't date somebody else whilst you're dating somebody else. Yeah. Don't cheat. <laughs> at chess as well. That goes for chess too. Don't I, cheat. Yeah. Don't cheat at anything. 
actually. I cheated at uni, but that's fine. Apart from that, don't cheat at chess. I would also say don't cheat at uni. <laughs> but... <laughs> I would but say that's it's okay. funny. As long as it's harmless. Okay. It was it, it was clever extension of the rules rather than cheating at rugby. Oh, right. Because it was COVID. Okay. That makes it okay. I feel like that's slightly more acceptable than just what like... Jack, what, what Jack, what Zach wants to say is, absolutely not, you freak. What did you do? He's holding in the pain. Because <laughs> Zach is a uni boy. I'm a... I'm a you're an academic. Um, yes, and a university purist. Yes. So if, I'm you, not. if you're going to go to uni, just go to uni and do the work. <laughs> I think, just, you know, whatever it takes, man. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you do you. <laughs> what, what do you think has been, and we don't need all the details, Okay. but what do you think has been like your favourite date that you've been on? Mm. Yeah, we'll, we should say, we'll try to keep names and stuff out of this. Yes, of course. Just for personal reasons. We're not going to talk about like, oh yeah, my ex-girlfriend Joanne. <laughs> I'd never dated Joanne, just in case that was yep. not clear from the way I talked. Um, but we'll not try and name names. Funny stories, oh yeah, make fun of ourselves. Yes, but of we'll course. we'll try avoid names. Okay? Just because yep. that would be kind of awkward. I don't think any of our exes will be listening. Yeah. But you never know. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> I've been blocked by every What was the question you asked again? I told you, um, I'm sorry. Your, your favourite uh, date that you've been on. Favourite first date or date? Let's go any date. Any date at yeah. all? Just like, what, what did you do that made it really great fun? You know, I'm a or... bit of a freak. I don't do many, like, thing dates. Okay. I like to just like be with the person. Nice. So coffee shops, gym mm. bars, go out for drinks together, go for walks together, go out right. like mountains and stuff. Mm. Like stuff to be together rather than like activities and stuff like that because I like talking. I like that. I like to connect with people like by just being people. Yeah. So for me the best kind of date is like just finding something to do mm. whilst you're talking. Nice. So like walking okay. up a hill that gives you a chance to chat to each other and just yeah. have a good time going for coffee, going for drinks, um, cocktail bars, that kind of stuff. So I think it was a really cool cocktail bar I went to for a date last year, in like a near Christmas time. I mm. don't know when, November. Oh, probably about a year ago now-ish. Wow. Maybe. To the day? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we had the podcast today, <laughs> yeah. to commemorate. Um, the anniversary of that I one I think date. it was, uh, yeah, about a year ago. Okay. A really cool gin bar in Glasgow that was just... Um, yeah, it was just really, really like chill, very, a bit, well, not chill, very fancy mm. looking, but also very relaxed environment, nice. which is kind of the perfect mix. Yeah. Like uh, the whole page of gin. Wow. Which I'm not a huge gin boy, but when you give me a whole page of gin, I'm like, oh, hoo, hoo, yeah, fruity ones, cool ones, awesome ones, ones I can't pronounce and don't know what they are. Yeah. I mean, most gins taste the same to me, but sure. um, that was cool. And then they That's had really another cool. page for tonics, which mm. I thought was just, there is just tonic. Oh no, there is a whole page of tonic. Wow. And yeah, the girl was nice too. <laughs> That's good. That's yeah, the girl was a nice bonus. <laughs> yeah, and there was a girl there too. That was a fun date just because it was a really cool place to go. Mm. Really fancy. I'd never been in a fancy like that before. Um, but no, I didn't, I don't really go like okay. cool dates. Would you do cool dates? I've, I've done them. Oh? Yeah. Ooh. Like, pray tell. I think, oh, to be honest, one of the best ones was actually Crazy Golf. Mm. It's just so much fun. Um, is, it, is, that, is that a fun date thing to do? I think so. I mean, I've never done it. I, I mean, I maybe it's a first date because it yeah. breaks the ice really well. It's a bit crazy. Yeah, it is. Did you guys get crazy? A little bit. Woohoo! A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that was really fun because there's no pressure mm -hmm. at all and you can kind of let your competitive side out a little bit. And no one's good at mini golf. Well, exactly. Which is good because then you're not getting shown up. Exactly. Uh, you're not getting embarrassed yeah. uh, or you're not embarrassing the other person. Because that's the thing, I'm fiercely competitive. Mm. So if I go on a date with someone and I'm going out to mini golf mm. and I'm trying to impress them, I don't want to beat them, right? You, you want to mm. be a gentleman, okay. but at the same time, I want to win. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So the, my inner demon shouts out my angel in my head and win. I go, right, I'm winning. Win. I don't care. <laughs> and I get there and I go, ah, oh, that was dumb. <laughs> And then they're crying, and I'm really loud, no. <laughs> That's why I don't do mini golf anymore. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that was, that was good fun, actually. That does sound good fun. Because, um, yeah, you're just having fun, laughing yeah. at each other, missing the shots and stuff like that. It's just, <laughs> that's really good fun. Um, but, yeah, I think I'm, I do enjoy a good walk. 
Good walk. Is it? What's your go-to? Say it's a first date. What's your Oof. go-to first date? Hmm. This is the thing. I. It's tailored to the person. I think. Well, that makes sense, wouldn't it? You would. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I don't have like a generic template. <laughs> uh, oh, I have a tick box. <laughs> right, sure. Because um, every first date I've been on, it's been very different mm-hmm. um, for each individual person. Um, but usually it's some sort of thing and then drinks. <laughs> some sort like... of thing and then drinks. That could mean literally anything. <laughs> what does that right. mean? <laughs> so um, it might be going for a walk. It right. might be, um, I've been to church on a first date before. What? Yeah. What? To be honest, that was... That's weird. That, that didn't last long, did it? About six months. What? I thought that was awesome. To church? Yeah. I mean, like, we're both Christian guys, and we love church, but dude, what the hell? If a girl invites you to church for the first day... <laughs> oh, she invited day, you? Yeah. I thought it was a you, you no, invite... No, oh, no, no, no. I, like, no, no, I wouldn't I, be that I, lame. Come on. <laughs> no, but if well, that's a, girl, a bit okay, then, because yeah, she invited you. Yeah, if a girl invites you to church for the first date, and then you go out for dinner and drinks. Well, it's a good first impression, isn't it? I like, mean, hey, I'm pretty godly. Look, I'm inviting you to, to church. To me, that's great. Wow. Um, I mean, I would probably get... I would probably say yes to that out of compulsion, say yes to pretty much right. everything, but I would think that was kind of lame. Really? Going to church? Yeah. First date? Yeah. Oh. And drinks after sounds good though. But uh, the thing for me, what made it good was other than like... Jesus. Yeah. Other than that, it was like you get to see her in her em- element. So she's with her friends, with her people, oh, at her oh, church. That's a good point, that. Um, and you can kind of see her in her normal self. She's not trying to impress you mm-hmm. like she would be if you just went out for dinner. She's just being herself in her group of friends with her people. And to me, that's quite valuable. That's, that's some question. Then you when can you put it like that, you've, you've validated quite well. All right, I'll give you that one. But <laughs> I'm just imagining, like, if, there's like, if there's a girl I'm thinking of asking out, going up to her and going, I want to go to church? <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have, have suggested it. I never have. Um, <laughs> Partly because, actually, no, our church does have an evening service. Um, oh, she can't. But church, when, so. when I was at a different church, we mm. didn't have an evening service. Ooh. And so it would have been a morning date. And to uh, me, that yeah. seems odd for a first date being in the morning. Why? I don't know. I kind of get what you mean, actually. Yeah, it seems like an evening thing. A first date seems like it should be in the evening. Mostly because everyone usually goes for dinner. Yeah. And in the movies and stuff. Yeah. I've Or after work. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. I was about to say I've never been to the cinema on a date. Oh, I've I like the cinema. Although, here's one. the thing, right? The cinema. I used to always go with friends or, or on dates or whatever, right? And it's kind of a weird thing to go on a date to because you're like, hey, let's go watch a film <laughs> and yeah. sit together in silence and then leave. Yeah. We're not going to talk to each other for the next two hours. Yeah. And then leave and go, did you enjoy it? Yeah. Did you enjoy it? Yeah. All right. And that's it. <laughs> let's go. <laughs> and it's overpriced. So, yeah. I, 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 a few years ago, I went... Uh, when I lived in Edinburgh, there was, uh, what film was it? It might have been Spider-Man, mm. or some kind of Spider-Man film. This was a few years ago, so I don't know which one it was. Um, and it had just come out, and I was like, oh, oh I really want to go watch it. Mm. Oh, it's still good. And then I was trying to message my friends, and like, oh, right, guys, let's get a date, let's go. When, when are we going to see it? When are we going to see it? And no one was available for like 10 years or whatever. Oh. So I was like, oh, but I really want to see it in the yeah. cinema. What am I going to do? And then like a weird thought just went, I could just go. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. I, I just went on my own. Wow. And now I never go to the cinema with people anymore. Really? Because you go on your own, you go get you get there whenever you want, which mm. for me is great because I like to get there really early. Okay. I'm early to most things. And everyone else freaks me out because they want to get there bang on time or 10 minutes late or half an hour late or some people really late. I'm like, no, <laughs> the, it's just 7 o'clock. We're there for 7. Yeah. Um, and so I go when I want. I go up to the counter, get my... Tango Ice Blast, which I always get. Ooh, nice. I love a Tango Ice Blast. Um, I go into cinema and sit down, just enjoy myself, just mm. sit in, enjoy the seat, snuggle up, and then have a little sip of drink, and then trailers start. Nice. I love watching trailers, they're good fun. The, yeah. Just enjoy the trailers, laugh at the bits I want to laugh at, yeah. say, hey, that looks pretty good, and then um, no, there's no one talking to me, see people talking to me <laughs> in a cinema, or even during any film I've seen before, I'm so mad. <laughs> oh, I get so mad. Oh, I get really mad. I went to the cinema with a friend of mine up in Edinburgh again, mm. who was a compulsive talker. Okay. 
and they would always go, oh, did I see that? Did you see that? Oh, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm watching it. I'm watching it. And they'd go, oh, so do you, I think that character might have something to do. Like, I don't, dude, I don't want to. I don't want to know. Just yeah. shut up. I, do, I just want to watch the film. The worst thing is when they ask questions. Oh. It's like, dude, we're watching the same film. I don't know. Or they ask a question that'll get answered later on. Yeah. Just watch the film. Yeah. Like it's if like, you want to come out, this that? Film, yeah. Like they just got intro. We're watching the same film. Yeah. How am I supposed to know who that is? <laughs> we're watching it at the same time. If you come out of the cinema and have questions, fine, ask away. Yes. That's what the post-cinema chat is about. Of course. The little debrief you have afterwards. 100%. Um, but I like going on my own now. Because I go in, watch it, I go home, and I just do what I want. Sounds quite nice. It's relaxing as fuck, yeah. man. It really is. It's so good. Yeah. I can imagine that. So no more dates to the cinema. <laughs> like, if, if I'm dating someone who says, I want to see this film. Will you go? Yeah, of course okay. I'll go. I wouldn't be like, uh, no, I only go on my own. But for like... <laughs> A first film I want to see, sure. first watching of it, it's like a, a film I really want to see. I'm like, nah, nobody else is coming. <laughs> no one's yeah. coming with me. I'm going on my own. And then I'll watch it with you for a second time. That's kind of cool. Like Top Gun. Oh, yeah. We're on a real cinema tangent here, sorry. Yeah. But I keep going. <laughs> like the film Top Gun, I went and saw it on my own. Mm -hmm. Loved it. Went and saw it with my housemate Joel. Mm -hmm. Loved it again. Mm -hmm. Went and saw it with some more friends. And then I bought it on... It's a good like, film. A, yeah. So I I watch it on my own, then watch it with friends. Yeah. Did we watch it together? No, we didn't watch it together. Uh, we did. Oh, we watched it here. Yes, we, we did. watched it. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's yeah, not yeah. the cinema though. No. And that, when you've watched a film like Top Gun more more than once, you can then go, yeah, the COVID. Oh, of course, yeah. absolutely. Oh, 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's acceptable. Yes, hundred percent. Yeah. So uh, a date to the cinema is off off the table. <laughs> yeah, sorry, after that whole big rant, no <laughs> cinemas for me. Thank okay. You. That's that's a big no no for me. Okay, so what? Ideal first date. What what are we talking about? Hmm. First dates. I've always been to a coffee shop. Okay. Because it's like, yeah during just, daytime. Yeah, during daytime. Yeah. Interesting. Well, I was always a student. That's why. Ooh. I've only been a worker for the past year and a bit. All oh, right. Where I can't go to a coffee shop in the middle of the day. Oh yeah. Or well, I shouldn't. And I don't. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, hopefully my boss isn't watching that. Yeah, one. Exactly. He's like, oh, you haven't been very active during the day. <laughs> uh, I've been going on lots of dates. Sorry. Um, <laughs> I haven't. No. Um, so, so yeah. Usually, I was a student, or was yeah. uh, you know high school, or whatever. So you go kind of during the daytime, and then yeah, I've always been to coffee shops, and I don't really like it. Well, I do like it because I like to chat to people, but you also go to coffee shops with friends and stuff. Yes. So I'm like, hmm, maybe something else. I do like. Some people find it weird, but one thing I do like is like making someone a meal. Ooh, because just very before nice. the podcast, we had a nice meal. We did. We did. We did. You are an amazing cook. Thank you. I just have to. I only brought it up just for that compliment. Yeah, I'm no. just fishing. He's he's very good. <laughs> he made a, a nice cottage pie. I did. And to be honest, it must be one of the best cottage pies. We'll put a photo on Instagram. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You can that's see. A high, that's a high praise. Yeah. No, genuinely. Thank you. Yeah. No. Oh. Ge yeah. That's not just a kind of flattery thing. The for checks the podcast. in the post, buddy. Oh, yeah. thank you. <laughs> lovely. No, genuinely, it was a very, very good cottage pie. But so. I like that because it's it's good for friends. Yeah. Because like, hey, come get to know me, come to my house, I'll make you a meal, we'll chat, blah, blah, blah. But also, for, I think it's quite a nice vulnerability oh, yeah. for dates to be like, yeah. this is my home. Mm. You know, I'm not going to like, it's in a way you're opening yourself up, in a way like, yeah. you're coming to my home, I'm making your meal. It's kind of romantic and nice as well, but yeah. also it's a bit more kind of open. I like that. Because you're sort of showing them who you are, where you live. Um, I don't usually think that far about it. <laughs> I've just yeah. thought about that now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not the kind of person that thinks about this. <laughs> um, but I do like that. Mm. But some people find that a bit weird, which is fair. Some people are like, that's a bit of a you know first date yeah. in your home. That's a bit weird. Totally fair. But I like that. Yeah, I think that's great. Because I think that word vulnerability mm -hmm. is, is huge with all relationships, actually. Mm. Um, especially... Is that the word I have to spell? <laughs> yeah, if you can try and spell that this episode, that'd be great. I'll try to pronounce it. I'll wait till the end. Um, yeah, no, I think that that's a really important word mm. when it comes to dating or friendships or even family. Being able to be vulnerable mm -hmm. is an incredible skill. And what I've learned over the years, the many, many years that <laughs> I've been alive, um, all 23. Oh, my goodness. Um, wow. So old. Um I've learned that being vulnerable on a first date mm -hmm. can actually be really helpful. Interesting. Because um, it just, it breaks that barrier of your relationship being superficial for like 
weeks. Yeah. And if you're vulnerable straight away, both of you know what you're getting. <laughs> and so you're not like putting up a front or yeah. wearing a mask for however long. Yeah. You're just like, well, this I've is always, who I am. I've always said that I think every guy, within a certain degree of inaccuracy, but every guy basically wants to be James Bond. In a sense, like they want to be cool, they want yep. to be suave, they want to be able to punch a guy in the face, drive a cool car, smell amazing. I assume. Yes. I think he smells amazing. I, pro- I assume. He probably does. Um, and yeah. look really cool, no matter what he wears, pulls it off, but in a cool kind of not trying kind of way. Yeah. So everyone wants to be James Bond, but like you're saying, if you go in a first date and say, "Yeah, I'm not James Bond." Yeah. Which I have done many times. Yeah. Because I get confused a lot. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so Just by the way, remembered. I'm, uh, yeah. Not James Bond. <laughs> so by the way, I'm not James Bond. Yeah, if you were wondering. <laughs> It's easy to get me mistaken <laughs> for Sean Connery, but... <laughs> it's the action. It's <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, I had to choose the Scots. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Um, but yeah, I think it's nice to go in and say, you know what, I... <laughs> just walk in with a list go, here's my issues. Yeah. Uh, if you could sign that waiver, then we can start. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I do. Yeah, it might scare them away. Yeah. Explains why it's I've nice. never got past date one. <laughs> <laughs> here's you. all my issues yeah. and all my baggage. And there you go. <laughs> Yeah, no, but I think to to a certain extent, I think that's right. Because I think that if you go in very honest with who you are, where you're at, what life looks like mm-hmm. for you, yeah, um, I think that's really valuable on on a first date, even. Because yeah, because first few dates are just getting to know someone. Yeah, even if you've been friends for like many years. Yeah, when you start dating, it's very different. very different, yeah. really different, and so you kind of have to get to know that person again. And there's certain barriers that friends can't get into that, fr- that like dates can, um, so you have to kind of break them. Like what's going on and what yeah. kind of baggage do you have, and sort of deal with it maturely, yeah. which is my struggle <laughs> dealing, <laughs> dealing with stuff maturely. <laughs> I was saying to Zach earlier before this, like I have two levels. I've got my happy fun self, yeah. and I've got my very serious. Someone's gonna die. <laughs> like okay, let's focus here. Yeah. Let's get serious now. You know, I've got those two levels. Yeah. And I've got no in between. <laughs> so like dealing with something that's like a relationship or like, yeah. oh, I'm going to cringe. You're like, who you have a crush on? Um, is something I just can't do. Yeah. Because I just, I have to either giggle yeah. or have such a stone cold face that it freaks people out. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, love ducks. It's a fine day. <laughs> No, but I mean, that's something to navigate as well. It's just it your own approach to dating and approach to relationships. Because I know that there are some things that I won't do mm-hmm. on, on a first date just because... You mean like topics you won't approach or something? Um, potentially. Yeah. Um, but also, you know, there are certain places I won't go. Mm-hmm. There are certain things I won't do on, on a first date just because I don't want to put either of us in a position in a position where either of us could feel uncomfortable or it could lead to something that we don't want. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it's just kind of knowing yourself yeah. and, and navigating the world of, of dating in a way that works for you and for the other person. Yeah. Because you can't be selfish. <laughs> what? <dating. laughs> I think getting this all wrong. <laughs> I've been so self-centered and narcissistic <laughs> this whole time. Yeah, again, I walk on my first date after I've given them my list of wrongs and baggage. Yeah. I say, you're here for me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Got to know their place. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, you're right. It's all yeah. about... But again, it's not just about being selfless. It's about kind of both of you being mutually aware of each other, I think. Yeah. That's what, what makes it work well. And that, yes, it's... Obviously, you don't want to be selfish, but sometimes you have to look after yourself. Of course. And yeah. I think it's about yeah. recognising when that other person needs a bit of vulnerability, when they need a bit of time, when they need a bit of this and that. You know. But just recognising what they need and giving them it. Yeah. And then being open to saying, you know, I think I need some attention now. Yeah. Or I think I need some whatever it is. 100%. And having that person reciprocate that. It's quite nice. Absolutely. I mean, reciprocation. If, if it's never reciprocated. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's not a date. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's not a date. <laughs> That's when it becomes illegal. You're just talking to a wall. <laughs> I do, I've done that a lot too. Yeah. <laughs> I did that once. And that, first of my many embarrassing stories. Um, okay. I uh, was chatting to my that at the time girlfriend. This was a few years ago now. Um, and she was standing next to me. And I, had, I had no idea where we were. And she wandered off and I wasn't looking and paying attention. And I just kept chatting. <laughs> And for a good five minutes, and then this random person came up to me and was like, "Are you okay?" And I was like, "Yeah, I'm just chatting to." Oh, oh, she's she's gone, and she had like wandered to the bathroom at this point, and so she was nowhere to be seen. I couldn't even point to her and go, "That's my girlfriend." I was just chatting to a wall at that point, and this person's like, "Are you okay?" And I go, "Oh yeah, I'm just chatting to." Oh, oh, uh, yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> thank you, <laughs> thank you. But the thing is, I can't then. What? Yeah. Hang on, how did you manage that? It was a club, so it was like really, or a noisy bar, sorry. It was, it was right. very, very noisy. So, okay. And she had kind of said, oh, I'm going to the bathroom. I hadn't heard it. <laughs> and so I just kept chatting. And then this person just saw me chatting. Nobody looking at me or oh around me. I wasn't close to anybody. <laughs> but just imagine That's a guy standing there hilarious. going, hello, 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 hello. <laughs> it was a good few minutes I was going about because I was chatting about something. <laughs> that I'm enthusiastic about, which is everything. Oh my gosh. Um, and it was, yeah, it was very because I couldn't then say, oh, my girlfriend's just over there, and they go, oh, ha, ha, It was like, there's no girl in sight. This guy is a mental case. No <laughs> she just looked at me and went, so funny. okay, and That's then walked so away, and she kept glancing at me. <laughs> so, <yeah>. <laughs> That's <laughs> hilarious. Yeah. Oh that my word. a lot, yeah. Gosh. That's uh, tale one of you and the Barry stories. <laughs> I've got too many of those. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I'll ever be able to top that. Do you have any embarrassing stories from from dates, from relationships? Um, it's hard to think of on the spot. So no it is. Um, <laughs> I I mean, not really. Not really. I mean, a girl once broke up with me because I said I didn't agree with her pasta. Oh my gosh! Yeah. What? I didn't know it was her pasta. Wait, you have to explain the story. So we were having a conversation. Firstly, are you okay? Are you I'm, are you yeah, happy? I'm fine. You're over it. I'm perfectly content. Okay. Um, this is going to be a vulnerable moment for us here. It's yeah. going to be nice. Okay. Prepare yourself. Yeah. Brace Tears yourself. are ready. I want my tissues. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good crying face. It was very good. Um, no, so we were just having a conversation mm-hmm. about um, different pastors and theology, basically. And Can I just stop you and say your dates are very different to my dates, firstly. <laughs> Going to church, chat with theology, and put pastors we agree with. Who are you dating? <laughs> so this was this was like a third date. So okay, it right, wasn't right. it wasn't a first date. Um <laughs> but yeah, so we were just talking about pastors and theology and stuff like that. Because she was really into that. Mm-hmm. I wasn't madly into theology like I am now. Yeah. I wasn't that into it back then. Um but she yeah, I, I basically said I didn't agree with this pastor. It actually wasn't her pastor. She didn't go to his church. He was in America and we oh. were in this country. So it was just someone she watched on oh, This country is England, so you shouldn't know that. Yes, uh, in case you're completely lost. Um, <laughs> yeah, so this was an American pastor. Um, she'd never been to his church, just watched him on YouTube. Oh, I And see. I said, I, I don't agree with some of the stuff he says. Right. Which is a legitimate You're allowed opinion to, do that. to have. Yeah, yeah. And well, it depends what he was saying, actually. Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. You should be nice to people. I don't agree with that. Oh, no. <laughs> no, of course not. Um, and she, she was taking the train home, and while she was on the train, she sent me a text. I oh, was like, text? yeah. Ooh, ouch. Yeah. And ouch. she was like, uh, I don't think we're aligned. Is that, where, is that the word she said? Yeah. She said, I don't think that we're aligned in the direction of our lives or something like that. Wow. Yeah. And she was like, I'm just following the peace. <laughs> I don't know what that means. But, um, what does that mean? I, yeah. I'm not going I'm to belittle what she said or patronize. I, I will. You, want <laughs> you can do it for <laughs> That's me. That's what I'm here for. Um, but I'm, I'm not going to patronize what she said. But yeah, she said she's following the peace and didn't see that we were aligned. Mm. In that sense, which is quite an important thing, yeah. especially if you're if you're a person of faith and your faith is important to you, um, it's important to get someone that's kind of on the same page. Um, 
and so we weren't. And so she said, uh, I don't think this is going to work. Wow, by so, text message? By text. Oh, and were you kind of like, ouch? Or were you kind of like, what the heck? I laughed. <laughs> yeah. I won't lie. Yes. <laughs> I like that reaction. I won't laugh. But the, I don't know why I high-fived you that. <laughs> I just, that really made me laugh. I yeah. did. I, I laughed. My family will attest to this because I was at home when I read the message. Oh, you're in front of your family yeah. when you were broken up with? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. And then you so, laughed. <laughs> yeah. So I saw the message and I just kind of chuckled. And um, they were like, what's happened? And I was like, kind of what I expected to happen. Right. Um, and so I told them the whole story. And they all laughed because <laughs> they were like, yeah, this, this is quite funny. They all laugh and go, you dodged a bullet. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Um, yeah, she so, sounds... I mean, obviously, it's important to have the same theology. I think that's yes. important. And she's not wrong. No. But that's a bit weird as well. Yeah, I mean, third date, you know. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I, what I said to her was, I respect it. Thank you for, for letting me know. Because um, there's nothing worse than being led on. Mm. That's true. She oh, she took mercy on you. Shivers. Yeah. Yeah. That is worse. Being led on is. Oh, that is that is bad. God damn. Have you ever Painful. been led out led on, or have you ever led someone on, Zach? Oh, <gasps> Zach, you just smiled at me. That's a bad sign. Um. You had a, like a, a a a guilty grin on your face there. I have been led on. Yes. Um, only once. But that and guilty grin. That was, was really, not about that. No, I've been led <laughs> on to the point where. It, it was really bad. Really? Yeah, it really... I've been it really led on a little bit with the person, mostly because the person couldn't say no and was quite oh. embarrassed. Oh, okay. So the person was not very good at confrontation, couldn't mm. say, mm, it's a no. So they're kind of always saying, maybe... Mm. But that's not that bad. That's just, yeah. you know, them being a bit awkward. No, I've had, I've had someone who was actively leading me on, fully aware that they were leading oh. me on. Oh, no! And that, to, I, won't, I won't lie to you, I will be vulnerable. And that, that messed me up for a while. Really? Yeah. They can't see relationships and this kind of stuff can mess you up badly, man. It, it really, really can. can. Yeah. yeah. To what extent um, did the leading on get to? How bad did it get? How long was it? Two months. Two months? That's a long time to lead yeah. someone on. And was it like they were just letting the, you chase them? Or was it like, oh, I'm, I would love to date you, but just can't right now? Both. Oh my goodness, yeah. that's that's bad. So it got to the point where I was like, oh, I'd love to take you out. Can oh. we can we go out? And Smooth. Yeah, and uh, sometimes when I said that, she'd be like, oh yeah, I'm just so busy with work, I just have no time. Um, and then other times she said, um, I'm, I'm on a boy ban. Oh, I'm on a boy ban? Yeah. She... Did she mean boy band? She's in a boy band? Is that what she <laughs> yeah. meant? Yeah. She, she does the reverse of drag <laughs> and dresses up as a man and is in a boy band. Just push. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, no, it's a boy ban. Boys where... alive. <laughs> sorry, I'm on that. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Um, where she said she wasn't dating anyone for however long and then within a month of me kind of ending everything. Um, she was married. Um, whoa, 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 whoa! Within a month? Uh, within a month. Oh. So anyway, anyway, so that was that was a bad case of being led on. That, yeah, that is a bad case hurt. of being led on. I've never heard one that bad. And also then getting engaged or engaged or married. Married. Full on. Was she engaged? With a wedding when you... and everything. What? Mate, I have no idea. So, I have dissected this in my mind for two years. I feel like she must have been engaged, right? <sighs> when but that's even worse for her. It's quite bad for me as well. Oh, wait. <laughs> But yeah, no, it's... So anyway, that's... Yeah. But like she was doing that when she maybe was engaged. Oof. That is bad, isn't it? It is what it is. We move. Yeah. I learned a lot from it. So. But it does, it does hurt. Well, this is the thing, is my mindset, because of that and other situations like it, and other situations that are completely different, my mindset is now, on the one hand, there's no such thing as risk. Because mm -hmm. either you learn something, yeah. or something awesome happens. Yeah. Um, and there's also no such thing as failure. Because you learn something. As long as you have time. good intentions, there's no failure. Because yes. if you're just saying, I want to get my emotions out there yeah. so that they're heard, and this person doesn't reciprocate, you're like, hey, I can take that, and I've done nothing wrong. Just yeah. sort of, I've just put my emotions out there. Yeah. Um, and then in that case, you're right, there's nothing wrong, because there's no, there's no failure, there's no wrongdoing, because you're just doing something honest, and then you're happy with the result. Not happy, yeah. but you can accept the result. Yeah. If you don't have those intentions, then you can be... Yes. Mistaken, or you can do something wrong, I think. Yes, for sure. I, I agree. Yeah. I agree. But you, you have to learn from every situation. Absolutely. Um, and if you don't, then 
it will really hurt. It can, and it can get bad. I'll bring myself down to my serious level serious here. Hang on, let me just. <coughs> and there was a time when I broke up with a girl when I was at university, and it, it got quite bad as well. It was um, this is our vulnerable section of the podcast. Yes. Really. You can um, skip this part if you want. <laughs> but, but we're going to be vulnerable. We're going to be vulnerable, Skip. <laughs> yeah. That would just be horrible. <laughs> this is where we get our trust issues from. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, well, hey, we've got each other. So yeah, okay. exactly. We don't need them. We'll, we'll miss them. A little hand touch. Um, that's going to be weird for the audio listeners. So we just, we hand hug. That was nice. Um, that's our vulnerability hand hug. Yeah. Sorry, serious. Come on. Sorry. This is what I'm talking about. I don't have a... Right. We're going to be vulnerable. So, yeah. So, I broke up with a girl... And this is like many, many years ago when I was at university. Um, and I just was not taking it well at all. So I decided very stupidly, um, didn't really chat to my friends about it, just kind of like, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine, just blah, get past it. And a whole, it wasn't a very clean break, it was a very messy break. Lots of stuff right. happened. And so I went and just plugged myself into church, volunteered for everything, plugged myself into uni. I say did work, but I was just at uni, I didn't do yeah. any work. <laughs> I never did. I, well, I, was, I did a lot of uni stuff. I just did a lot of like stuff to distract myself from my head. And it really does, if you approach it in the wrong way, sort of yeah. dealing with a breakup, it can really mess you up. So I, I ended up getting quite a serious burnout from that. Wow. So I learned to cook actually because I was majorly anxious because of that. Yeah. So it, it messed my head up. I couldn't walk outside for months. If I walked outside, I could not focus. I would just have a panic attack and have to come back in again. So I have a great mum who said, who recognised it straight away. I was like, right, you come home, you're going to rest, blah, 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 you're going to do this, you're going to get a routine going. And all that stuff really helped. And that's why I'm able to be like a human again. Yeah. But for those few months, I was just sat there just freaking out. And it wasn't the girl's fault. It was all my fault. It's like, no, there's no blame to lie with anybody else. But it's all about dealing with it in a way that is emotionally mm. sort of wise, yep. but also with with us on the topic of vulnerability, going to your friends and saying, okay, I need to chat about this. Yeah. And having, if you are a friend of someone who's broken up with someone, like just listening yeah. and not judging and just saying, you know what, just, just to chat about it yeah. and just get it out there and just have that time. Because if you don't, it can be really damaging. Like, 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 like we've seen in our lives, it can be yeah. really bad. Yeah, and I think with me as well, it's, it's funny that you mentioned your mum because my mum has been the, like, the greatest influence and sounding board should we have a little mum shout out yeah shout out to our mums shout out mums love we, you. we love you um she she really helped me so with this one that, that led me on or whatever mm-hmm. um it was a it was a while that i was seriously kind of hurt by this okay. to the point where you know text message notifications would kind of give me anxiety because oh. i'm like crap it could be her yeah um and that kind of stuff and my brother is studying psychology and i have friends that are psychologists and so i I try not to use psychological terms lightly Mm -hmm. um and i I do genuinely think that i had a little bit of anxiety from that um i I don't want to throw that term around (laughs) because it is something that people actually deal with yeah we are pretending it's don't worry this is pretend wisdom not psychology (laughs) right one (laughs) Um, but there are there are people who actually really struggle with that, and I oh, yeah. I don't. But um, anyway, and what my mum kind of noticed and said to me was, "You are dodging the emotions. Ooh. You're walking around the emotions. You have to face them head on. It's gonna suck. Wise mum. It's gonna really hurt, but yeah. you have to face them head on. Yeah. And so I'd go for like the longest walks I've ever been on, just sit in the woods mm. with no one with me." And I just sit there and just kind of force myself to engage with these emotions. Yeah. Um, and that's kind of been a helpful way for me to process everything that's happened afterwards as well. Yeah. Every time something's gone wrong or every time a relationship has broken down or some crazy life event has happened, that's always kind of been my way of, of dealing with it, yeah. is heading off somewhere, maybe going for a run. I started running. Um, something like that where you can remove yourself from the situation and actually force yourself to engage with the emotions that you're feeling Mm. because if you don't engage with those emotions you can press them down you can cover them up um, 
but they'll always come back to bite you. And sometimes they won't come back to bite you until you're trying to start a new relationship with someone else. Oh, yeah. And then that can rear its ugly head and it can get, you know, disastrous. And even just things like trust issues, yeah. if you've had those kind of, I mean, if you've had relationships that have had that issue, anybody, like that, that can really mess you up for yeah. like friendships with parents with family, with everybody. It can really, it can really hurt because the trust is such an important part of our lives. Oh, yeah. So I think what you're saying is really good, actually. I like that. And sort of what your mom said about facing it head on. Because that's so right. When, when you're at the end of a relationship and it breaks up, obviously depending on the circumstances, it can take years to get over, yeah. right? But people think, all right, well, I'll just wait that time, say a few months for like a regular breakup, whatever. I'll wait a few months, it's fine. But it's not waiting, it's hard work. Yeah. It's effort, it's like, like you're saying, confronting it, going for walks, getting a routine going, mm -hmm. changing and learning and stuff. That's all part of the process of getting over it. Yeah. And then returning to who you are. But even then, you're still never who you were because you've had that experience yes. to learn from and to be open about. So honestly, yeah, being in our little vulnerable time here, it's so important to just be vulnerable like this yeah. and just chat to each other about it and have a person you can go to and exactly. say, look, just don't judge me. I'm just going to say everything. And they say, all right, I hear you, man. Yeah. Here's some advice maybe, or even just, I hear you. Yeah. No more needs said. Um, or just someone to sort of bounce ideas off or just say anything. So it's so important to have that openness with yourself. But hey, I tell you, it sucks. It does. It I, really I'm does. so bad at it. Like I'm really bad, <laughs> I'm so awful at it. Partly because I'm bad, I'm bad at talking about relationships, but also just because I'm not a very open person sure. generally. Well, my whole life is quite open, just about things that are very personal to mm. me, I'm very bad at. So my entire job is quite secretive and quite closed. My Therefore, therefore my whole life has to be a little bit guarded in, yeah. sort of in terms of like what those personal de details are. Um, Ironically, on my podcast, I know. Um, but, <laughs> uh, but therefore, like it, that does affect yeah. other things in my life. Or maybe I'm really good at that because my personal life just isn't very open. I don't know. But yes, that's something I really struggle with. Yeah. Um, that I will always try and do better. I think that's, you know, everyone needs to work through whatever things they've got. But I think what you mentioned about having friends mm -hmm. that you can talk to is just so unbelievably important. Oh, yeah. And, um, I have to say that I'm incredibly grateful for you. Um, I'm grateful for you too. Because, Sam. you know, to be honest, I've never had friends that I can actually talk to okay. about this. So I'm incredibly grateful for you and, and for our other mutual friends as well. Yeah. Who, it helps to yeah, have, I mean, really in, in our circumstance, to have bros. Yes. Having a bro is so good. Yes. Um, obviously, if you're not a male mm. or if you just don't have any male friends and you're a guy, you might not call them bros, you might call them whatever you want, but having that friend that's just always there, it's really, really good. I'm gonna put my phone down, sorry, it's buzzing. Um, just so popular. Yes, yeah, so, <laughs> sorry, yeah, they're like, are you, are you recording right now? Um, but you're having that, that, just those friendships that you can just text at any point, and just be like, yeah. all right, let's just chat yeah. about this. I like that, that's good. And really we're gonna be vulnerable with each other. Yeah. Vulnerable friends. <laughs> <laughs> Should we move on to a bit more happy stuff? Yeah, shall let's, we? let's. Do you want to talk about love? Out. Love, man. Oh, oh, what I can't, let me just change back up again. Okay, back yep. to my happy Switch self. level. Woo, let's go. <laughs> no one's dying today. Yes. Woo, let's go. Love, man. What a thing. What, what a thing. What is love? Baby, don't hurt me. <laughs> oh, okay, copyright. Sorry, copyright. Um, <laughs> no, I, this is the thing. I love, I love love, right? Mm. Weddings, I, I've, I've never, I mean, most of my relationships don't last crazy long. Maybe like six or seven months. So, which is, yeah, there you go, sweet. Um, like, which is long enough, but like, not so long as to have like that proper, mm. like, bound love, if you know what I mean. Like yeah. a little love, yeah, but not like, we're in love and mm. we're gonna get married or we're gonna engaged or whatever. It's like that proper love. Yeah. But I love it. I really do, I love love. Weddings are my favorite thing ever. Mm. Old couples that have been together for 150 years. They're the best. That's my favorite They're thing in the, the world. Best. And that, because that's what love is, man. Yeah. Like, and obviously for us, like with the Bible and stuff, reading about what love is, mm. is so important as well. And I just, mm. I just love love, man. I love yeah. it. It's the best. It makes me so happy. Yeah. And I mean, this is the thing is, is love is kind of, it's a, it's a twofold thing, right? Okay. What it's, that it's a feeling, but then it's also action. Yeah. And it's, it's more than just a feeling. 
And yeah, this is what I, I always get annoyed at in movies and stuff. Mm. It's like, oh, I just feel in love. I fell out of love. It's like, no, you don't fall in or fall out of love. It takes a lot of work yeah. to fall in love. Yeah. And it takes a lot of work or lack of to fall out of love again. Yeah. Like, if you're not putting the effort in, you're not yeah. going to have it. Yeah. You and and when, you're, when you're married, you, if you fall out of love, pick yourself back up, mm -hmm. get back on the horse. Yeah. And you, you get back in love. Because you're locked in there, baby. That <laughs> you're ring. Locked in there. No, like, you got no choice. <laughs> yeah. I mean, obviously, there are certain situations, certain circumstances that would lead to divorce um, being a more acceptable mm -hmm. route. But, that's coming from two single unmarried men. Yes, exactly. Yeah, I pretend um, wisdom for the day. <laughs> but, but on the whole, once once you're married, that this is your person, and you're you're building a life with that person, and so if you, there will be days where you don't feel like you love that person, mm -hmm. but those are the days where you have to, act like you love that person <laughs> even more. Fake it till you make it. Sometimes act as if you have love, and love shall be given to you. Fake it till you make it. Yeah, sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes. I like that. But it's just, it's just a nice thing, a sentiment of like, this is a person that I've decided, no matter how annoying they are, yeah. no matter how much they yeah. just really grind my gears, Yeah. Um, but also I'm going to trust this person not to grind my gears mm. and give them all my secrets and give them all my vulnerability, give them all my issues and stuff and have them ha know that they'll be gentle with me Yeah. and have them give me all, all their stuff Yeah. and and knowing I'll be able to handle that and treat it with care and then just looking after that person, have them yeah. look after you in all the forms. Because like dating is like, you can get space with each other. Yeah. Dating, you can like, all right, there's, for lack of a better word, not really much consequence because you can get involved, but then you can break it off if it's bad or whatever. But when you're married, that's it. Like I've chosen this person and I like who they are and I want them to be this person that's with me. And that's love, man. I like yeah. that. I think it's an incredible thing. It is. You know, when you when you decide that this is the person you're going to give your whole life to, mm -hmm. and for your faults, and you know that's why vows are so amazing at a at a wedding. Oh, I heard vowels. <laughs> like what a i o u. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, the the vows at a wedding are, are so amazing because it is like for better or for worse, mm -hmm. in in health or in sickness, whatever it is, till death do us part. Yeah, it's like I'm gonna when when you're up. I'll, I'll be down when I'm down you can be up and we work in that kind of rhythm yeah um, I think so often people think that love is is I don't, I don't know how attraction to it. it is yeah yeah, yeah it's, it's purely attraction yeah. and you know you get on a bit and that, that's fine that's part of it I'm sure it's, it's definitely part of it but love is so much more a rhythm mm -hmm. of life and hearts and souls being kind of mingled together that's in a this good, that's a good wording heart rhythm. and souls man oh yeah yeah well the the way that i've always kind of thought about it and understood it is that um we're like two people are like trees mm -hmm. and you're growing separately and you've got good lives you're doing your own thing two separate trees but then over time you grow closer and closer and closer mm. until those trees start to intertwine Sexy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I'm on my so, high level again. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, so these trees, in a non-sexual way, start to <laughs> start to intertwine to the point where, like those trees that you see, where they are so intertwined that they become one tree. Mm -hmm. And then they flourish even more, and they grow even higher, and they produce even more fruit, because now you've got the, the strength and the power of two trees yeah. growing together for one particular goal. And to me, that's it's very the. Poetic. My goodness. Yeah. How much whiskey have you had? <laughs> to me, that's that's kind of the image of, of love in a sense, mm -hmm. and that's the image of, ultimately, marriage, is yeah. is that idea of, creating, these lives together in which you're so intertwined with one another that you grow and flourish together. I have nothing more to add to that. That was that was very beautiful. So instead, shall I tell you an embarrassing story? Yeah, oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I can't wait for this. Yes. So um, 
<laughs> this is a really bad one. This is, this is really, oh, no, really bad. Okay. But again, we're being vulnerable with each other. Yes. That means admitting our mistakes with each other. Yep. <laughs> and with however many other strangers as well. <laughs> um, if and you know me, don't judge me. This is bad. This is so bad. Okay, it's really bad. Okay, I'm bracing um, myself. So I was, when I was dating uh, a girl in uni, um, we'd been going out for a few months, right, at this point. And not, maybe, maybe two months. So it wasn't that long. Okay. And we were just lying on the sofa, just chilling one day. And watch, I think we might have watched TV or just ch- chatting. I don't know what we're doing. Okay. <laughs> and then she said something. I didn't hear what she said because she was kind of muffled. Like her face was like in the couch or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay. And then, because like, we were lying on the couch. Um, right, okay. So her face was like sure. muffled. I couldn't hear what she said. I was like, what, what did she say? But it sounded like she said, I love you. Oh. And I was like, oh, what the heck? To, oh. What? This is really embarrassing. Oh, what I, oh, no. oh, no. And so I freak out, obviously. Oh, I'm no. like, oh, no. And then she said, like, what do you think? Uh. And, and I just packed and went, yeah, I, I love you too. Oh. All right? oh, no. And then she went, what? <laughs> I went, hmm? And she went, did you say you love me? I went, and I had to choose here. I was like, uh, yes. Oh. <laughs> and turns out she didn't say that. To this day, I have no idea what she said. No. But she said something and asked me what I thought. I went, yeah, I love you. <laughs> and then I couldn't back down. That was it. I didn't really feel you, that you way. You made your bed. Yeah. yeah. I, I didn't feel that way. But I thought the whole story of I didn't hear what you said, so I just chose to say I love you <laughs> was more embarrassing than just saying I love you mega early. Yeah. So I just went, yeah, yeah. I just doubled down. Yeah. Yeah. And then she kind of sat me down and had this whole chat about how she wasn't really there, but she's glad I am, but she yeah. wasn't on the same level. And I was like being really serious on the outside, but inside going, I can't believe I just... <laughs> to, be fair, to be fair to her, that was a really mature hey, way of doing it. Really mature. Yeah. But I was, the entire time she was saying oh that, my thing, I was like, she was like, I'm glad you're at that stage. I was like, I'm not, I'm not, I'm really not. But <laughs> can't believe I said that. Incredible. Oh my, it was probably the worst moment of yeah. my life. Oh my god. We broke word. up very soon after that. Because <laughs> the embarrassment was too much. Oh my it was god. Awful. Yeah, that was. Mm. I didn't. It wasn't a good boarding, was it? That's, that's hilarious. Oh I didn't hear what she said, so I just chose to say, ah, I love you too. <laughs> no, like, oh, sorry? Oh, what that's the thing. Because or, she's, I thought she said, said I, I love you. you. I didn't want to go, what'd you say? Yeah, so I just make had, her say I it again. and just went, yes, I agree. <laughs> Because this is the thing, she could have been very vulnerable there. She could have been. And making her say it again could have been quite... And it would, imagine if I said, hey, Zach, I love you. Yeah. And then you're silent and I go, what do you think? And you go, "Sorry, what, what did you say? Yeah. <laughs> it looks What'd like you you're say? panicking, doesn't it? It looks yeah. like you're not caring and panicking. Yeah. So, yeah, that's like... Yeah, that was, a, that was, that was Gosh. bad. Gosh. Don't judge me. We're vulnerable together, okay? <laughs> People at home. This is a vulnerable moment or you have to just accept it and just be there for <laughs> me, incredible. please. It was one of the worst moments of my life. I wow. The, and in, in terms of embarrassment, in terms of how much I wanted to punch myself in the face, <laughs> I was just, you are the dumbest man on earth. But also in a weird way, just how funny it is as well. I'm like, we're not dating, it's been many, many years. Yeah. So I can laugh about it now. That's so, But it's just that oh my your word. whole body goes, the, the clenches yeah. up and goes, what did you do? You know? <laughs> Oh my god, that is Isn't that incredible. Bad? Isn't that bad? Wow. That's probably, yeah, that's that's, uh, that's, that's number two of Ewan's embarrassing story. <laughs> Out of what, 700? They get worse. Oh my <laughs> gosh, that's such a good story. <laughs> wow. Oh wow. Should we finish off here? Yeah. We said we would at the beginning. Should we chat a bit about our family and friends and stuff like that? Yeah. Those kinds of relationships? Yeah. I think, I think we've touched on friends a little bit mm-hmm. but to kind of double and, and parents as well yeah, right? yeah. Um, but to kind of double down on what we were saying it's really important to have that group of mm-hmm. friends around you that you know are are slightly removed from the situation yeah um, but are also people that you're happy to be vulnerable with yeah those people that you trust because mm-hmm. um, I know that if I'm talking to you or I'm talking to some of our other friends um, we have lots of friends we're pretty popular, we're so <laughs> it's popular. Great. we have one 
<laughs> it's each other. Yeah. Um, no, so I, I know that if I were to say something to you that was like a secret or really vulnerable, it would go no further than this table. Unless it was on the podcast. Unless it was on the podcast. <laughs> and which um, it wouldn't go any further either because no one's yeah. listening. <laughs> yeah, and I could edit it out. Um, <laughs> but, you know, I think it's really important to have those friendships. Um, I think something that you mentioned earlier as well is really important. Both of us are men. Yes. And uh, last time we checked. <laughs> and um, I think it's really important, especially nowadays, for men to have really close relationships, really close friendships. Mm. It's, um, it's, it's a modern thing, I think, is that, mm. like, um, we always, we were, like, we were joking, like, we're on a cute date right now and that kind of stuff. Like, that's not really a thing men would have done in the past. No. Like, in the past, it would have been men. Oh, we're not on a date. Ugh, gross, that's disgusting. But now men, in a weird way, have got a bit more vulnerable with each other and in a way that they can be a bit more jokey and a bit closer and that kind of thing's funny yeah i think that's a really nice thing to see and to do as well i agree and you know back in the day it would have been oh you're all chums you're all you're all mates at the at the club or something like that if something bad happened it would have been here's a stiff whiskey slap in the back you're all good now let's go for some golf get back up let's go yeah um whereas nowadays where you know there's this weird kind of dichotomy uh, Whoa, hang on a minute. <laughs> so, so this weird kind of dichotomy, especially mean? on social media. So it's like two opposing things. Thank you. Um, on social media, especially where you have men are told to be vulnerable and to have emotions mm-hmm. and to you know be themselves and all that kind of stuff. But then also, we don't care about men. Men just need to stop talking. I saw a video literally today that was like, what's something that sounds like a really good idea until it's said by a man? Whoa! I'm like, okay. Really? Wow. When, how did it's we, 2022. How people. did we get to that point? Yeah, that's But bad. anyway, so we've got this weird dichotomy, but ha- men having really close friendships with one another mm-hmm. and being able to be vulnerable with one another enables us to navigate this weird world in which there are such differing stereotypes. Mm -hmm. So there's the uber-masculine, hyper-masculine... My gosh. Yeah, like (laughs) men's men. Um, Like the the hyper-masculine side where you're this... You're you're effectively a Greek statue (laughs) that breathes. You don't have emotions. You're an Adonis. Exactly. You you don't have emotions. You don't communicate anything. You just exist and look muscular. Mm. And then the other side, which is kind of like the the Harry Styles type masculinity mm. where it's like you, you wear dresses and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, and those are the two extremes. And what I see from the Bible and stuff like that mm. is that true masculinity is somewhere in between. Yeah, It's somewhere in the middle where you're able to navigate this world of being vulnerable but also being strong mm. and leading and all that kind of stuff. Um, and so having men having really close friendships with one another enables us to navigate that world in a way where we can actually be sane yeah. at the end of the day. We can actually process some of the crap. And it's important to mem- m- mention that this is happening in, we're recording this in November. Yeah. You may, if you're watching, notice Zach has a lovely lack of beard, lovely moustache. Yeah, I've committed. Because it is November right November. now. And November is a great thing because it's, it's important to mention that guys do have I think this November is about sort of men's cancer, but this past Movembers have been about men's mental health. Mm. And just saying that actually it's not crazy to say guys do have a really big suicide rate. Yeah. Because, and I think a big reason for that is because they can't be vulnerable with each other. Yeah. And all these issues are told just to squish them down yep. and push past them. And that's a big issue that I, I'm glad is going away. And I'm yeah. glad is slowly and sadly, it, it's not, it's too late for some people, but it is being pushed out yep. and guys can be vulnerable and that's good and that's where that friendships yep. like I think having those friendships before relationships is so important hugely and if you don't have that basis of friendship it's very hard to get a relationship like going mm-hmm. in, a, in a safe way because if it goes badly who are you going to chat to yeah um, and that goes like obviously we're chatting about guys because we are guys but for girls too you know you've got to have your core group of, of friendships for girls we can't talk about what that looks like because 
Honestly, um, we don't know. Oh, yeah, it is a mystery to us. I have got no idea. If there are any girls watching, please, please enlighten us as to what happens in, like, in the girls' bathroom. Groups. Oh, yes. Why? What is this phenomena? Why do you go together? All these women just going to the bathroom together. Yeah. Are you having like a separate party? I mean, I would, yeah. Have you seen oh, us yeah. at a party? Mike? I would go somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> but like, is this like... The... How, how do girl friendships work? Yeah, that would be interesting. It we would should, be interesting. Let us know. know. We Let's should know. have a girl on the podcast. Oh, we should, shouldn't we? Yeah, diversity. We should have two. <laughs> 50%, shouldn't we? Yeah. Sorry about that. Next we should. time, we'll have a girl on. Maybe not next time, but like the time after. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. And episode, what were we on, three? Episode five. Episode Episode five, we'll have a girl. Just, okay. And I'm not saying that because I just want to delay it. Um, I'm saying that because we've got episode four. We do, planned. we have a special, <laughs> well, sitting now we have a special guest coming on. Yeah. Next podcast. Yes. So, so we've, tune in for that. we've got that planned. So it's not that I'm just trying to push off having a girl on for as long as possible. <laughs> oh, Is that we've cool. already got something Cooties. planned. Cooties, so. oh. <laughs> I, I want to, I like... Uh, okay, but anyway, tangent. Tangent, yes. But, but we'll stop the podcast here. Uh, yeah. I think that's been a really nice podcast. I think it's been good. I feel, honestly, quite nice. Right yeah. Now, because we've had some quite fun together. Yes. Told some, well, I've told some embarrassing stories about myself, which are <laughs> awful. Um, <laughs> Amazing. We've been, yeah, yeah, I've got loads. Um, we've been vulnerable together. Yeah. And uh, in a nice way, and just sort of, you know, just chatted about stuff that makes us us go, ooh, and yuck, or stuff that's really quite painful for us, mm. or stuff in the past. Mm. Uh, and we've hopefully, you at home, have learned something from our mistakes. Don't say I love you just on a whim. That's our pretend yeah, wisdom for If thing. you can't hear what a girl says, Don't just listen. ask her what she said. <laughs> or, go for it again, just say I love you, you never know. <laughs> just double down. If you can't hear what anyone's saying, from now on, I'm gonna say, I love you too. <laughs> at oh. work, at work, my manager's like, Ewan, can you, I love you too. <laughs> Uh, maybe if everyone did that, the world would be a better place. Everyone would be more connected and vulnerable, I think. Because we'd all be embarrassed. We'd all be in love with each other. <laughs> <laughs> or really kind of uncomfortable. Yeah. Just like, oh. Yeah, yeah. Um, anyway. But yeah, so thank you for listening and joining us. Hopefully you enjoyed that. Hopefully you learned a little bit. Um, or at the very least, laughed at us in a yeah. fun way. Um, we hope you enjoyed. And feel free to let us know what you thought. Mm. Um, you can go to Spotify and rate us there or yeah. Apple Music or YouTube in the comment section right below us you can go to Instagram yeah we'll DM us picture of my cottage pie we will uh, and that will all be on there you can DM us like Zach said and let us know if you have a topic you want us to talk about mm. um, and we'd love to chat about it if, if, if it's not like a big topic we'll do lots of little ones for an episode or whatever just don't worry about it let us know we'll handle it I think I'm going to DM uh, the pretend wisdom account from one of my other accounts <laughs> and just say that we should talk about sharks because I think we should talk about sharks I love sharks so we need really? an episode on sharks alright it's yeah. confirmed episode 12 12 is about sharks episode 12 is about sharks great thank um, you to whoever suggested that out there yeah the relationships that was a, a good topic thank you for the suggestion yes um, hopefully you it was what you hoped for yeah and if, if nothing else um, we just hope that it got you thinking about relationships. Yeah. Because so often we can coast around just doing our own thing. But yeah. when, we, when we take a second to actually think about things, um, it can be really useful. So, yeah. Lovely. Right, we'll see you in the next episode, uh, <laughs> hopefully, um, <laughs> if you haven't been put off by our weirdness today. Yeah. And thank you for joining us. Have a lovely day. I love you. <laughs> see you later. <laughs>